Hello everybody and welcome to my dining room. It's a sunny, warm day here in East Tennessee. It's the middle of March and guess what is heralding spring for me? It's my beautiful miniature Catlia and I've been looking forward to sharing these gorgeous blooms with you all. I'm going to tell you today how I take care of this plant and just let you enjoy the blooms while you listen. I do find it hard to speak and look at these beautiful scarlet red, orange, yellow unicorn blooms at the same time. It's so exciting when this orchid is in bloom. She's the orchid that put the wind beneath my wings to grow orchids as a beginner. I've had her for almost 20 years since my daughter was just a toddler and she's my orchid friend. Every spring she's bloomed for me and she's never missed a year. She's the orchid that's my easiest one to grow. Every spring she's bloomed for me. She never complains. She never gets fussy or picky and I think she's perfect. She is a no ID. I had the ID at one time, but I was a beginner and I didn't know to keep the ID tag. So I lost it somewhere along the way. A subscriber sent me an ID that is close, but I'm not 100% sure that that is the correct ID. So I'll place the maybe name in the description box below for you. So let me tell you her story. I bought her at a local grocery store in 2003. She had two pseudobulbs, four leaves, and three beautiful flowers. My friend Kathy, who was the floral manager, came walking up to me with this beautiful plant in her hands and I was mesmerized and I bought her and she has had a home here ever since. She grows in a western facing window, usually in my sunroom, but right now she's in a western facing window in my dining room and she blooms in here every year. The reason I don't let her bloom in the sunroom is because the temperature here in my dining room is more constant this time of the year than in my sunroom. The temperatures can vary a little bit more in my sunroom than in here. And I don't want any bud blast. And it's also just a tradition. Every spring she's in here blooming. And she heralds spring for us. Everyone in my family is crazy about this plant. She's everybody's favorite and she is very loved. I water her every week, once a week, and I have for as long as I can remember. I fertilize every other time with my latest fertilizer recipe. And if you don't have that recipe, I'll provide a link to the video about it in the description box below for you. When she doesn't get fertilizer, I water with CalMag and seaweed extract only. And I use reverse osmosis water on all of my orchids. She's been growing in sprouted New Zealand orchid grade sphagnum moss for 20 years. And I use the Best Grow brand. And I'll tell you something really interesting. I've never completely repotted this orchid. In other words, I've never taken all the moss from around the roots because it's green and beautiful sprouted moss. If I notice the moss starts to smell bad, I remove what is brown and decomposed. But that only happens on the top of the pot. Um, the moss underneath, about an inch or two down into the pot, and all around the pot is green and sprouted and live. It's beautiful. This orchid is the one that taught me how to grow in New Zealand sphagnum moss. So many people ask me about growing in moss and here's the key. If it starts to smell funny like fish, then it needs to be replaced. If you're a beginner, and you're growing a Cattleya, I recommend you use Orchiata bark. It's long lasting and it's easy to repot a Cattleya in. 
I was really blessed to buy this one in quality orchid grade moss, but most of the moss that orchids come in now aren't orchid grade moss. It's this cheaper basket moss that goes brown and dead looking and it smells badly. And the orchids need to come out of that brown moss as soon as possible so that no damage is done to the orchid. I know there are beginners on my channel and advanced growers watching my channel. So here's the best advice I have for you about choosing the medium for your cattleyas. If I were a beginner, I would grow cattleyas in Orchiata bark. It's going to be the easiest choice until you gain some experience. Give yourself some time to build your growing skills before you try something like this. Moss can be a challenge even to experienced growers. If it's overwatered, it can rot roots and it can develop white mold easily. It's not very likely that you're going to find a cattleya to buy growing in moss like this one. It's the only one I've seen in my area that came potted in moss. Most cattleyas come in bags now. They're nicknamed bag babies and they come bare rooted and you can find them in garden centers in the US. They're very easy to pot in bark. So that's what I recommend if you're just starting out with cattleyas. For those of you who grow in New Zealand sphagnum moss, this is definitely an awesome way to grow cattleyas, but I recommend you keep an eye on the moss. Now, if you're more comfortable completely changing out the moss every time you repot, then do what you're comfortable with. Also, if it looks brown and it smells bad, replace it. But if it's green sprouted moss, it is very beneficial to the plant. This orchid is growing in a nine inch orchid pot. I buy these from repotme.com and they're the extra sturdy orchid pots. And that nine inch plastic orchid pot is inside this 11 inch ceramic pot that has an attached dish. And when I water, I use a paper towel in the bottom of the dish to drain the water into a bucket underneath. And I'm going to tell you all an interesting story about this orchid. There's actually a reason I never did a total repot on this orchid. I was reading on how to repot a cattleya, you know, before the days of YouTube, and it said absolutely to totally replace all the medium after a year or two. So I was going to do what that said, you know, like the right thing and totally replace the moss. So I took the cattleya out of its little pot and the moss was so pretty and green and the roots looked beautiful. But when I took it out of the pot, it accidentally broke the tip of a new root and I was not amused. But that's when I sat down and thought about what I was doing and why. I looked at the moss it was growing in and it was beautiful and green. It had sprouted. The moss I was about to put it in didn't look as good as what it was growing in. So I realized then that there are different grades of moss and the moss I was about to use wasn't what it was potted in. So I did more research and I found the orchid grade moss. So if you've invested in orchid grade New Zealand sphagnum moss, look at it before you totally change it out. If it's sprouted and pretty and green, you want to keep it. That's what I did and my cattleya has thrived in it for many years. And next thing I want to show you all is an example of, of what is called happy sap. Do you see these little droplets of sap? Cattleyas, they produce a lot of happy sap. They're very happy orchids. Several of you have mentioned it in my comment section, and I just wanted to show you what it looks like. It's this sticky, honey-like sap that attracts pollinators to the blooms. 
And if it gets on your fingers, it is really, really sticky. But I think it's pretty. And I hope this video has been helpful to you all. It's been a lot of fun for me to show you and tell you the story of one plant. I like telling stories about some of them because they tell the story of how I learned to grow. And showing one plant like this can open up some interesting conversations. I like being transparent about victories and defeats and things I might do a little differently to give you ideas to help you grow better orchids. And thanks always for your awesome comments and for your friendship and for being my international orchid family. You all are such a blessing to me. And I'd love to say the blessing over you, your families, and your orchids. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be favorable to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his shalom peace. You all make it a great day and we'll see you next time.